Shadanana, Rajajana, Gandana. Vedanta Shami Mahaj Prabhupada ki jai Anant Koti Vaishna Brinda ki jai Nama Charja Sridhari Das Thakur ki jai Prem Sakaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Brinda ki jai Shri Sri Radha Krishna Gopinath Sham Kun Radha Kunigiri Govardhan ki jai Vrindavan Tham ki jai, Navadip Tham ki jai, Jagannath Puri ki jai, Ganga Mai ki jai, Ramana Mai ki jai, Tulsi Devi ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to the assembled devotees, Go Premanande. Thank you all very much for coming. This is a good time for a cell phone check. You could check and see that your cell phone is on in silent mode. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Miditam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Shwayam Rupa Kadal Mahyam Pradhati Shapadantikam Mande Han Shri Guru Shri Jatapada Kamanan, Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Shagrajatam, Shahagana Raganatan Vitam Stam Sajivam, Sadvaitam Sabhutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padan, Shahagana Lalita, Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha E Krishna Koruna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanshana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Prashabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hodi Priye Vansha Kopitaru Vyascha Kripa Sindho Vyevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
this is what we do. We chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Dhamma, Hare Dhamma, Rama Dhamma, Hare Hare. Uh, because Abhinnatan Nami Nami No. There's no difference between Krishna, the transcendental sound, and Krishna, the absolute truth, the source of everything, the personality of Godhead. Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitana Rasa Digraha Purna Shuddha Nityamukta Abhinnatan Nama Namino. As Srila uh, Prabhupada declared on early in the, his first um, recording, this chanting comes directly from the spiritual platform. There's the physical platform, there's the mental platform, intellectual platform, and the spiritual platform. Physical platform is the platform of the physical body and physical things. And that is the temporary, it is temporary, first of all, and external to our real self. The body has a beginning, the body has an end, but the self has no beginning and no end. Nitya shashvato yam bhunano. Nahangyate hangyamani shirire. The body is born, the body dies, but the self is eternal. It can't be cut, it can't be dried, it can't be blown away, it can't be hmm, drowned. It's impervious to all material circumstances. Uh, the body can be cut, the body can drown. Uh, so the First understanding is that I'm not the body, aham brahmasmi. I'm the spiritual being, the spiritual soul, the atma within the body. So there's the physical platform. And then we think, yes, I'm not the body, but I'm, I'm my emotions, I'm my feelings, I'm my thoughts. And that's also not quite true because the thoughts come and go, the feelings come and go, and the, these belong to what is sometimes called the subtle body. Just as we have a coat and a shirt, we have a, a gross body and a, a subtle body. So on the subtle body, these feelings come and go, these thoughts come and go, but they're not eternal. And they're not identical with myself. Even they, they cover myself. Uh, I get covered by anger, I get covered by greed, I get covered by so many uh, irritations. Or I get all absorbed in thinking of some intellectual topic. But these things are temporary. Even our great scientific thoughts, our uh, um, mathematics and physics and all of that, this goes on on the intellectual platform. But that also is temporary. So above the mind, above the intellect, above the body, 
is the soul proper, the atma, the self within the body. And that's our actual identity. When the body dies, nahangyate hangyamane shivide. When the body dies, that part remains. But we travel from to the next body, from one lifetime to the next. Because my mind is still absorbed in material things or attached to material things, thinking about material things. So that material content of my mind brings me to the next body. You know, everything begins with thinking. You, you think of, of going to, to Queens and the next thing you're in Queens. Not because your thoughts alone take you there, but the thoughts are what you lead you there by some process. Get on a train, get on a bus, get in your car. But on the platform of trans transferring from one body to another, the thoughts are what carry us. There's a, a process. Nature has a process. But our thoughts carry us to the next body. But the, again, we're, we're not the body, not the gross body, not the subtle body. We're the imperishable atma or self within the body. And that body is meant to be freed, liberated from all material conditions. And that's possible when the mind is on the spiritual platform. So that's what happens when we chant Hare Krishna. The Krishna sound is on the spiritual platform. And when our mind is on the sound, then our mind is on the spiritual platform. And when our activities follow our mind onto that spiritual platform, they become spiritual activities. So this chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, is a process that can purify the mind, uh, purify our activities, uh, purify our whole life, bring it all to the spiritual platform. Even if we don't fully understand how the mantra works, it works. I don't at all understand penicillin, the pharmacology of it. Probably most of us here don't understand the pharmacology of penicillin. But if you have some uh, infection for which such antibiotics work. You take penicillin and it works. Understand it or not understand it. So we may understand the meaning of the mantra, we may understand something about the philosophy, but even if we don't understand it, it will have an effect. Nama Chintamani. Chintamani means a thought gem. Thought gem. What is a thought gem? Chinta means thinking and money means gem. So what's a thought gem? A thought gem is a gem in Vedic literature that can give you whatever you think about, whatever you want. Uh, there's a thought gem and a desire tree. They're related entities. What's a desire tree? a tree that can give you anything you want. Uh, we go to a mango tree and we can get mangoes. You go to an apple tree, you get apples. Go to a banana tree, you get bananas. You go to a desire tree, you get anything you want. So the desire tree or the uh, thought gem can give us anything we want. So this Hare Krishna Mahamantra or Krishna himself is compared to a desire tree or a thought gem. That is, whatever we're looking for comes from Krishna. So we're going here or there to look for whatever it is. If we go to Krishna, we'll find everything. 
and we'll find it in better shape than what we're, the way we're looking for it or finding it on the material platform. I'm looking for something here with the goal of happiness, pleasure. But the pleasure originally has its source in Krishna. The happiness originally has its source in Krishna. Not everything, uh, bhukti, mukti, siddhi, if I want mystic powers, they come from Krishna. If I want physical enjoyment, that comes from Krishna. If I want mental enjoyment, that comes from Krishna. If I want spiritual enjoyment, that comes from Krishna. So if I go to Krishna, I'll find everything. And Krishna means Krishna, the transcendental sound also, that sound will give us everything. Uh, therefore, by chanting Hare Krishna, uh, one feels the highest uh, satisfaction, the highest pleasure, nama chintama, because everything is there in Krishna. Nama chintamani Krishna, chaitana rasa vigraha, Rasa is a very significant word in, in Vedic writings, and there are whole books written about rasa, not whole books, whole sets of books, whole classes of books written about it. But it can be said to be uh, a particular, rasa means taste. So whatever taste you're looking for, you can find in Krishna. And rasa means also relationship. In this world, we have relationships with uh, parents, we have relationships with children, relationships with friends, relationships with uh, masters or servants, employers, employees. We have relationships uh, with our husbands or wives or lovers. But those relationships are temporary. The, my relationship with my friends sometimes break, or I sometimes make new friends. My relationships in my family, uh, uh, mother and father and children, will be interrupted if somebody is going to die just a question of who's first, then the relationship is, is broken. Or sometimes the, the children leave home and they turn their back on their family. Or the parents split up and that becomes a source of difficulty. And the loving relationships, again, between uh, even husband and wife or lovers, they're not permanent. They last for some time. And then there's disappointment, there's frustration, there's grief. It's just the way the world is, is put together. But the, we want permanent relationships, lasting relationships, lasting loving relationships. Those relationships are originally present in Krishna. If you read the Krishna book or the Srimad Bhagavatam, you can find the extensive discussion about relationships that the devotees have with Krishna, how Krishna's playing like the perfect child, how he's playing as the perfect friend, how he's playing as the perfect um, husband, how he's playing as the perfect uh, lover. And the devotees relish these relationships with Krishna. So rasa vigraha means the very form of all those relationships. The original source is Krishna. Purna, he's complete. In the material world, everything, every 
relationship. Every person is less than complete. But Krishna is complete. Whatever exists, exists within Krishna. In the Isha Upanishad, he's called the complete whole. And whatever forms of completeness we might experience here have their perfection in Krishna. And whatever incompleteness we experience is remedied by Krishna consciousness. Purna and Shuddha. Shuddha means completely pure. In, in this world, In this world, the relationships are not completely pure. They're, they're motivated. Uh, I, it, it would be very kind of you to do something about that. And that. <laughs> so Shruta means completely pure. In, in this world, the relationships are, there's some motive. I love you till your, your money runs out or until you're old, or till we have an argument, or until I find someone else new that's in more interesting somehow. But the and the the, the sounds in this world are not pure. we we have songs that we like, but they're. They're really commodities. Somebody has composed them to make money. Someone has recorded them to make money. Someone performs them to make money. Uh, the intention is not uh, pure. And the sound is not pure. It's not that the sound of what we hear on the uh, radio, television, or YouTube elevates us to the highest platform of consciousness. But this chanting of Hare Krishna does that. It brings us to the level of pure consciousness. And therefore we're recommended, Kirtaniya Sadhana, go on chanting, go on chanting Hare Krishna. And in that way we can stay on the platform. Purna Shuddha Mitya Mukta. This is the platform of real liberation. Abhinata Namanamana. Because there's no difference at all between Krishna and Krishna's name. When we're chanting Hare Krishna, then Krishna is dancing on the tip of our tongue. We may not fully understand that, but it's true. Because Krishna, the, uh, Krishna is always depicted as uh, playing on his flute and dancing. But when you chant Hare Krishna, Krishna is dancing on your tongue. It's such a nice thing. The Srila Rupa Goswami says that when I chant Hare Krishna, how much can I chant? I have only one tongue and two ears. If I had thousands of tongues and thousands of ears, then I could chant Hare Krishna. That means, you know, he, he says, it's, it's such nectar that when I chant, I wish I had thousands of tongues and thousands of ears. In material, with material sounds, we get tired. The popular song of last year is no longer popular. 
But this chanting of Hare Krishna, we can go on with year after year, year after year, generation after generation. And the sound will always be fresh, the sound will always be pure, the sound will always be complete, the sound will always be liberating. Hare Nam and Kirtana. Therefore, the Vedic literature recommends Ankirtana, Hare Nama. First of all, not just any name. There are so many names of different demigods or human beings. Chanting their names will, will not help us. There's no benefit to chanting Biden, 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 Biden. <laughs> or Trump, 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 Trump. There'll be no benefit. Uh, and we'll get tired of it. And we'll even get tired of the person, whoever he is, in which party, whichever party he belongs to. But this uh, Krishna vibration will always be fresh and new. There will always be something new. We just have to hear. So Anukirtana means constant chanting, go on chanting, go on chanting. And Anukirtanam also means by following. The, there are this chanting has been taught by great acharyas, great souls, liberated souls, and we're recommended to follow in their footsteps. As they chant, we should just chant the same way, and we'll get the full benefit. Chanting is, is not alone, but it's part of a larger science, a larger process of bhakti yoga, devotional service to Krishna. And from our books and from the association of devotees, one can learn the whole science and make one's life perfect. But really, our, our method is easy, it's chanting, dancing. Uh, philosophy, we have so many books, and prasadam, mm -hmm. it's transcendental food offered to Krishna. Hare Nam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Are there any comments or questions or anything? Yes. Hare Krishna. I can't hear at all. Yes. Yes, please feel 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 free to leave if you'd like. Just those who have some questions would like to get some questions can stick around.
And your question is? The question is, the the So therefore, Harir Nama Nukirtana, one should chant by following. Srila Prabhupada founded or brought the Hare Krishna movement and he emphasized this chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So one doesn't have to complicate matters. Chant this Maha Mantra. On and on and on and on. Chant the other songs. But this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the main thing. The Hare Krishna mantra is the main dish. You know, there's, there may be a little chutney here or a little, uh, little sauce, but the main thing is this chanting of Hare Krishna. So, uh, yes, there's so, there are songs that you can sing with Krishna's names that have been chanted by the Acharyas. Feel free. But we're giving emphasis on this chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The songs you can appreciate and maybe some friends can appreciate, but not everyone will know them. The public certainly will not pick them up very easily. But this, this Hare Krishna is only three words. Everyone can chant. Everyone can remember. So we give more, and, and everything is included, as you said in these names. So, uh, and it's been proven that Srila Prabhupada spread Krishna consciousness all over the world through this chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So this is the prime authorized mantra for spiritual realization. Chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Appreciate. Uh, you, you asked a question. You got it. Chant other songs, fine. This is the prime authorized mantra. Something else? Yes? Hare Krishna. What is Krishna mission for the text? Krishna mission. Like every guru, avatar, have mission. What is Krishna mission? Every guru, every avatar, they have a mission. They have a mission. What is Krishna's mission for the people on earth? What is the mission? The, the mission is uh, Dharma Samstapan Arkaya, to revive our eternal nature. Now I'm thinking I'm American, I'm Indian, I'm white, I'm black, I'm a member of this family, that family, I'll be happy this way, that, that way. But the purpose is to revive our eternal relationship with Krishna. That will make us happy. Is that okay? That's the mission stated in Bhagavad Gita. It's not that we've invented it or Prabhupada invented it. This is for everyone. Okay, why do Krishna overshadow the other God in Bhagavad Gita and the other God in the Bible? He overshadow them. them. Why does Krishna overshadow everybody. Krishna, why does Krishna overshadow everybody? Yeah. Because he's God. <laughs> There's no difference between God in the Bible, God in the Bhagavad Gita, God is God. It's not that there's different gods, there's one God. So that God overshadows or exceeds, excels everyone. So that's Krishna. Major difference between Ram and Krishna. But is there a difference between Ram and Krishna? No, Krishna and Ram are Advaita. They're the same yeah. person. Uh, but when in Iskon we seem to be giving more importance to... Because Krishna is the original form and Ram is the expansion of Krishna. How many percent of Christ, Jesus Christ is the Krishna? How many percent of Vishnu is the Krishna? And 
Shiva in Krishna. Everything is included in Krishna. Pura. How many percent of Christ is in Krishna? Yes. How many percent? Yes. Fifty, hundred? What percentage of Christ is in Krishna? What percentage of Christ is in Krishna? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. What of Vishnu? Hundred percent. Shiva? Hundred percent. Ask another name. Hundred <laughs> percent. But not Muhammad. Muhammad. Hundred percent. Even Muhammad. <laughs> You? Even you and me, every one of us is included in Krishna. That's what it means to be 100%. Uh, Krishna's, the Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Krishna includes everything. So, no master, no God, no Abhrapa is greater than Krishna. Correct. No one is greater than Krishna, no one's even equal to Krishna. That's what it means to be God. No one is equal, no one is. Is greater. How many years did this war start? 20 million? 1 billion years ago. How many years did this war start? How many years ago what? This war started. The world was created oh, 4 million 300,000 times 1,000 times 2 times 12 times 30 times 50 years ago. <laughs> About 20 million years ago, right? I, I can't do the math. You'll have to do it. For me. Yes. I have a question, and it's somewhat similar to the question that he asked. In terms of the, um, the historicity mm -hmm. of the Gita, yes. I wonder to what extent um, you think that story like, literally happened within the context of the broader Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. One verse in particular, I, don't, I can't cite it just one verse, but Krishna says that he returns to the earth every day. From Bhavami Yuge Yuge. Yes, fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if that's literally true, mm -hmm. I wonder if you think it's possible that Jesus Christ was an incarnation of Krishna, or put otherwise, if the Bible is essentially consistent with the Bhagavad Gita and with the Vedas, if they're fundamentally different, and if the Christology that's, you know, that, that defines Christianity is fundamentally inconsistent with the Bhagavad Gita, no. or if it's actually consistent. And if it is, is that metaphorical, or is that literal, or is that the wrong question? Uh, no, it's not the wrong question, and, and it's literal. Krishna is God, and he comes to earth from time to time to uh, protect his devotees, to reestablish religious principles, to subdue the forces of evil. But do you think that Jesus Christ... Yes, he's there? also one of the incarnations. Incarn when you read the literature, there are different kinds of incarnations. We think, well, is he an incarnation or not an incarnation? So, you know, a, a, uh, an either-or sort of question. But actually, there are different kinds of incarnations. There's incarnations Krishna, in which Krishna performs pastimes. There's incarnations in which Krishna oversees qualities of nature, and there are incarnations which are um, living beings who are empowered by Krishna. Do you forecast the return in the same way that the Christians do in a very literal sense? Do you guys think that that's going to happen in this age, in this century, in another century? Well, there's a, a, in, the, in the Vedic literature, there's a schedule of incarnations. So we can know, for example, that Krishna, at the end of the present, Kali Yuga, as it's called, will come in the form of Kalki, another avatar. So that's uh, roughly 500,000 years from now. From today. From today. So not, not any time, not, not, not tomorrow or, or next week, no. <laughs> not something to plan for in the immediate No, we're not, uh, we're not uh, making arrangements for the next annihilation or the next well, that's avatar. Kind of what I was asking is like, I was wondering if you guys were planning for like the imminent for Armageddon and all that, it, it, um, our planning would be premature. It, uh, 500,000 years is a long time. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Does Krishna believe in poverty or does he believe in wealth? His devotees. Say does he again. believe in wealth or poverty of his devotees? Does Krishna believe in wealth or poverty of his devotees? Does he believe in wealth or poverty? Yeah, so wealth and poverty are actually like dreams. 
The wealthy man is wealthy for 10 minutes. The poor man is poor for 10 minutes. Like a dream, you dream and, and you're the king of the world for 10 minutes. And then you dream you're a pauper, that also lasts 10 minutes. So maybe five years, maybe 10 years, maybe 30 years, we're rich or we're poor. But that's really like 10 minutes. Because we go through lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Sometimes we're rich, sometimes we're poor, sometimes in this lifetime we go from rich to poor or, or back again. So that's something like a dream. My eternal position is beyond rich and poor. It's spiritually rich. So we have to come to our spiritual position. Even the rich man, he's not necessarily a happy man. The dream of, of wealth doesn't necessarily make him happy. But when you come to your spiritual position, you'll be wealthy, you'll be happy, you'll be everything. Not materially, but in, in your natural state. Is that okay? Okay. Shall we stop here? Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for your questions. Srila Prabhupada Ki here we go. Um, okay, Nitai, I have a message for you. You're an excellent Madanga player. Thank you. On your 